Thinking about the sheer size of the universe is equally as fascinating as it is terrifying. In fact, the solar system on its own, which is as big as an atom in comparison to the whole universe, is so massive that we can't even be sure that it doesn't contain more than eight planets. The universe contains an incomprehensible amount of objects, which are called astronomical objects. From stars and exoplanets to hypothetical extraterrestrial structures, this iceberg covers everything that may or may not exist in space. This is the second part of the astronomical objects iceberg. In the first part of this series I covered the first three tiers of the iceberg and today we will continue with the last four. You don't have to watch the first one to be able to follow this video but I highly advise you to do so because in the first part I explained a lot of basic terms and concepts that might be helpful to fully understand the entries in the second half. Like in the first part I will only give you the most important information of each entry because that's the purpose of an iceberg video. And if you'd like to get more information on certain topics you are more than welcome to do further research on your own. Also at the end of the iceberg a certain someone, who I'm sure you're already familiar with, will help me out with the final entry. V.Y. Canis Majoris. V.Y. Canis Majoris is a red hypergiant, which basically just means that it is very big and glows red. It is located in the constellation Canis Major, and it is in fact one of the biggest and most luminous known stars in the Milky Way. Its radius is 1420 times bigger than that of the Sun, which is incomprehensibly huge. This right here is V.Y. Canis Majoris, and that little dot beside it is the Sun. For us humans, the Sun is the biggest object in close vicinity. It is so unreal that there exists an object object that is so much bigger than the sun out there. But as we'll find out later, there exists even a bigger star than this one, Antimatter. In the first part of the iceberg I explained the concept of dark matter. Like dark matter, you've probably heard a lot about antimatter before, but you have no idea what it is. Matter is made out of particles like electrons and quarks. What's interesting is that every particle has an equal but opposite antiparticle, which means they share the same properties except they're oppositely charged. Since they have the same properties, antiparticles can be combined just like regular matter and form antimatter. However, when regular particles and antiparticles meet, they destroy each other, which is called antimatter annihilation. This antimatter annihilation releases a huge amount of energy, which makes it perfect for bombs. Because of this antimatter annihilation, antimatter is very hard to come by in the universe because it mostly gets destroyed by the presence of regular matter. However, it can be produced artificially, but since it requires so much energy, we only can create very little amounts, which is isn't very useful. IC1101. With a diameter of 4 million light years, IC1101 is the biggest known galaxy. It is a supergiant elliptical galaxy to be precise and it got discovered in 1790 by the British astronomer Frederick William Herschel I, Ida and Dactyl. Ida is an irregular shaped asteroid located in the asteroid belt. Its orbit lies between Mars and Jupiter and what makes Ida special is that it has a moon which is called Dactyl. It got discovered in 1884 and in 1993 it became the second asteroid that got visited by a spacecraft. Ida has a diameter of 31.4 kilometers and Dactyl has a diameter of 1.4 kilometers. Kepler-186f. Kepler-186f is an exoplanet which is a planet outside the solar system that orbits around a red dwarf about 500 light years from Earth. It only got discovered in 2011 and it is the first planet to be discovered that is similar sized as Earth and lies in the habitable zone of its planetary system. It is believed that it is either a terrestrial or ocean planet or a combination of both, like Earth. It probably has an atmosphere, but it is unknown what it's composed of and how dense it is. In 2018, studies have shown that it may have seasons and a climate similar to Earth's. Plus, it basically looks like Earth. But don't let this fool you, because there are still a lot of small unknown details about the planet that can't be detected with current scientific instruments and that could determine if the planet is habitable or not. Also, it is very far away, but we know it's there and it looks cool so yeah that's that's pretty nice
Traptis 1e. Traptis 1e is another exoplanet orbiting around an ultra cool dwarf star only 40 light years away from Earth in the constellation Aquarius, which is already a lot closer than Kepler 186f. It has a similar mass, size and gravity, it is in the habitable zone of its planetary system, it is confirmed that it has an atmosphere, it has liquid water on its surface and in 2018 scientists declared that it has a great chance of being habitable. Proxima Centauri b. I already mentioned this one when I talked about the Proxima Centauri star system in the first part. Discovered in 2016, Proxima Centauri b is the closest exoplanet to Earth, only being 4.2 light years away from us. It is located in the habitable zone of its planetary system, it has a similar mass to Earth's and there might be liquid water on its surface. But it is also subject to strong stellar wind pressures which might not allow the planet to have an atmosphere. Saturn's largest ring. The Phoebe ring is the largest of Saturn's rings and most people don't even know it's there. Because it isn't right there with the other rings, it is about here. 16.3 million kilometers away from Saturn. It only got discovered in 2009 because the particles it's made of are so dark that they barely reflect any light. That's why scientists couldn't see it until they detected the infrared light that the ring emits. It is called Phoebe ring because Saturn's moon Phoebe is located near the ring and it is believed that the ring particles originate from this moon. Eye of Sauron Nebula. In the constellation of Sagittarius there exists a nebula that looks like the Eye of Sauron from the Lord of the Rings movies. That's all there is to it. Far Far Out. Far Far Out, or officially called 2018 AG 37, is the most distant object in the solar system. It is a type of asteroid that got first discovered in 2018, while scientists were looking for the supposed ninth planet of the solar system, which also is an entry further down. Its existence only got confirmed in February of last year, and I don't think I have to explain why its nickname is Far Far Out. Comet Swift Tuttle. The Comet Swift Tuttle is a comet that got discovered in 1862. During its lifetime, Time, it lost a bunch of pieces and particles, creating a meteor shower that you can observe every year in the middle of August. Higgs boson. Everything is made out of matter. Matter is made out of atoms, atoms are made out of protons, neutrons and electrons, and those are made out of even tinier particles that are referred to as subatomic particles. The Higgs field is a field of energy that is everywhere in space, which is made out of Higgs bosons, which are elementary particles. Subatomic particles pass through that field, some get through faster and don't interact with it a lot, while others pass through slower and interact with it a lot obviously. Now the slower a particle passes through the Higgs field the bigger its mass is. This mechanism is called the Higgs mechanism and the guy who came up with it, Peter Higgs, gained the Nobel Prize for it. Tadpole Galaxy. The Tadpole Galaxy also called UGC 10214 is a galaxy that is located 428 million light years from Earth and it looks like a tadpole. It got its tail through another smaller galaxy that it encountered and the reason why it looks like a tadpole is because the gravitational forces of the smaller galaxy galaxy pulled a lot of stars, gas and dust out of UGC 10214. Bennu. Bennu is a carbonaceous, rich in water asteroid with a diameter of 419 meters that got discovered in 1999. It is currently tied for the highest place on the Palermo Technical Impact Hazard Scale, which is a scale used by astronomers to calculate the potential hazard of near-Earth objects. It has a 1 in 1800 chance of colliding with Earth between 2178 and 2290. The Great Comet of 1843 the Great Comet of 1843 is exactly what the name says it is. It is a comet that in 1843 was visible with the naked eye. Because of its brightness and size, it is considered to be the most majestic and beautiful comet to ever be seen and it obviously left a big impression on the people who saw it. Cosmic Microwave Background Have you ever wondered how scientists found out about the Big Bang? Well, it's because of a little thing called Cosmic Microwave Background. Cosmic Microwave Background is electromagnetic radiation from the early stage of the universe that fills up all space. And you've seen it on TV. TV static is actually what is produced when your satellite dish picks up anything but a TV signal, which partly is the cosmic microwave background. When the cosmic microwave background got discovered, people were already aware that the universe is expanding. And they knew that if the universe is expanding, then it had to be created in a very hot and dense state and from there on out it expanded and cooled down over time. Now if that were to be the case, there had to be some sort of isotropic radiation. That was when some dedicated scientists actually went on to look for this radiation and found it. That was the evidence that they needed to confirm the theory of the Big Bang. This is a really complex topic and I left out a lot of details, so I'm hopefully gonna link a video by PBS Spacetime that can explain this way better than I ever could. 
Virgo Supercluster. The Virgo Supercluster is a large group of galaxies containing the Virgo Cluster and local group among others. It has an estimated diameter of 110 million light years and in 2014 it has been confirmed that the Virgo Supercluster is actually part of another even larger supercluster called Lanikea. VY's cutie. Remember when I said that the biggest star in the universe is bigger than VY Canis Majoris? Well, it's not this one. But this one is also bigger than VY Canis Majoris. UY's cutie is one of the biggest known stars in the universe. It is a red supergiant star in the constellation Scutum, approximately 9,500 light years away from Earth. It has a radius of 1,188,000,000 kilometers and it is 5 billion times more voluminous than the Sun. Here's a comparison of UY's cutie and VY Canis Majoris. And here is one of UY's cutie and the sun. And the sun is barely visible, which is kinda freaking me out right now. Dr. Michael E. Brown's hypothetical ninth planet. Okay, this one is really wild. So, objects in the Kuiper belt have very unusual orbits. With our current knowledge of the solar system, there is no reason for these objects to behave like that. But that's where Dr. Michael E. Brown comes in. Known for his discoveries of several Kuiper belt objects, Brown proposed the idea that there might exist a ninth planet in the solar system that would explain these irregularities in the Kuiper belt. He came to that conclusion by looking at the way Neptune interfered with inner Kuiper belt objects and he noticed that outer Kuiper belt objects were behaving similar but without any apparent reason. If a ninth planet exists, it has to be bigger than Earth but smaller than Neptune. And it has to have a very elliptical orbit where one rotation around the Sun lasts 20,000 years. Which would also explain why we haven't discovered it yet. But with the construction of new and better telescopes, ninth planet believers expect its discovery to happen in the next decade. Aumuamua. Aumuamua is the first, and as far as I'm concerned, only known interstellar object that passed right through the solar system. It flew right into the solar system, passed the sun, and it will probably leave the solar system this year. It is shaped like a long cigar and it accelerates like a comet without any gravitational influence, but it probably isn't a comet or asteroid because it's way faster, way shinier, and there's no dust in its vicinity. It is unknown what it is and where it came from. It got first discovered in 2017 and it has an estimated length between 100 and 1000 meters and width between 35 and 167 meters. We don't really know much about this object and because of this there are a lot of theories surrounding it. There is a theory that Oumuamua might be a piece of an exoplanet made out of nitrogen ice and a more interesting theory is that it might be a piece of alien technology or more specific a camouflaged alien spaceship which would explain its strange behavior but of course there is no proof to confirm this theory. Great attractor. Since the universe is expanding, everything in space should be moving away from everything, in theory. But in practice, it isn't that simple because of the existence of gravity. In our universe there exists a region that is so massive that it pulls about a hundred thousand galaxies towards it, including ours, and we have no idea why. This region is called the Great Attractor and it is also referred to as a gravity anomaly. It is located outside the observable part of the universe, that's why we cannot say what it is. All we know is that it it's there and we are approaching it fast. Vein Nebula. The Vein Nebula is a nebula, a cloud of heated ionized gas and dust in the constellation Cygnus. It got created by a supernova between 10,000 and 20,000 years ago. And what you see here is the supernova remnant, a structure that resulted from the supernova. There isn't too much information about this one, but it looks really cool. Milky Way's airfill formant cloud. Sagittarius B2 is a giant cloud of gas and dust near the center of the Milky Way. It's one of the largest molecular clouds in the galaxy, having a diameter of 150 light Years. Due to the complex molecules and compounds it consists of, the most notable of which are alcohol and ethyl format, scientists believe that Sagittarius B2 smells like rum and tastes like raspberries. Wormhole hypothesis. As you might know, thanks to a smart fella called Albert, space and time aren't two separate things, but rather one single thing called space-time, which forms the universe as we know it.
Let's say this flat surface is our universe. Everything that has mass can bend space-time, which influences the way time works in that area. The bigger the object's mass, the more space-time is bent. Now, some scientists believe that if space-time can be bent, it may also be ripped apart and glued together. A wormhole is exactly that. It is a hole that connects two very distant points in space-time. In theory, wormholes might exist, but also maybe not. It's hard to say. If they exist, they would revolutionize space travel. There might also exist different kinds of wormholes, the first type of which would be the Einstein-Rosen bridge. This theory states that every black hole is a tunnel to a parallel universe, where everything is opposite and where time runs backwards. The tunnel exit in that universe would be a white hole, but you can't actually get to that universe as it would take an infinite amount of time to get through the tunnel. Another theory states that wormholes might have been created during the first stages of the creation of the universe and later scattered throughout the universe because of its expansion. Those wormholes would look like black holes, which makes them hard to distinguish. Bags full of astronaut shit. You might have seen one of those educational videos on how astronauts um, do the deeds in space. But have you ever asked yourself what happens with their feces? While pee gets recycled and turned into clean drinkable water to reuse on the space station, the poop gets burned and put into bags which are put into airtight containers. Those containers get launched at Earth and will burn in Earth's upper atmosphere. At least that's what's supposed to happen. Nemesis Hypothesis Planet 9 was already really interesting, but let's go even further. What if there was a star? orbiting Sun. In 1984, the hypothetical red dwarf Nemesis was proposed. A star that orbits the Sun at a distance of 1.5 light years, being even closer to us than Proxima Centauri. The existence of such a star would explain the periodic occurrence of meteorite impacts that seem to happen every 27 million years and that previously caused mass extinction on Earth. Nemesis would periodically pass through the Oort cloud and with its gravity, it would influence the course of the comets that are located in the Oort cloud. Due to the high amount of comets that would be redirected into the solar system, it would be pretty likely that one of them collided with Earth. With current technology, it can be assumed that the existence of such an object would be unlikely. However, stars like the Sun are usually created in pairs. It would be possible that the second star left the Sun so far that its origin couldn't be traced back. Rhea's ring system. Rhea is Saturn's second largest moon, it is specifically an icy moon. In 2008, using some science instruments, NASA suspected Rhea to have a ring system, which would be revolutionary, since Rhea would therefore become the first discovered moon with a ring system. But upon further observation, they found out that there is literally no ring material, which means that there must have been something else that interfered with NASA's observation instruments. But we have no idea what that could have been. J0740 plus 6620. J0 740 plus 6620 is the most massive neutron star ever observed. It is so massive in fact that it is near the boundary of the theoretical size limit for neutron stars. It is estimated to have a diameter of 26 kilometers. In addition to that, it is located in a binary system with a white dwarf 4600 light years away. NGC 1052DF4 NGC 1052DF4 and NGC 1052DF2 are two ultra-diffuse galaxies, meaning they are galaxies with extreme low luminosity. They are located in the constellation of Cetus and it has been proposed that both of these galaxies contain little to no dark matter. In the first part we learned what the effects of dark matter are and those galaxies show no sign of those effects. This fact would help prove that dark matter does exist. If what we think is dark matter is just an unknown effect of gravity, it should also be present in those galaxies. But that's not the case, hence being a potential proof for the existence of dark matter. In the case of NGC 1052 DF4, tidal tail have been observed, which hints at the interaction with a neighbor galaxy, which would also explain the lack of dark matter. Triple Galaxy Collision When two galaxies collide, their massive central black holes merge together. But what happens when three galaxies collide? Such systems are very rare, so there isn't much information on what would happen. Of course, the collision would create extreme gravitational waves and the galaxies would probably merge into one. But apart from that, scientists are uncertain. Although they expect that observing a triple galaxy collision would tell us a lot about the creation of the universe and how black holes could become so big in the beginning. A few months ago, the Hubble Space Telescope actually detected three galaxies interacting with each other, who are probably going to merge together eventually. Hoax object. Hoax object is pretty weird. I mean, j just look at it. It is a so-called ring galaxy, which is a very rare type of galaxy, and it is called that way because of the ring-like structure around its core. Hoax object got discovered in 1950 by astronomer Arthur Hoke, and it is located in the constellation Serpents, Kepler 10c. Kepler 
Titan-10c is an exoplanet that orbits the star Kepler-10 in the constellation of Draco. What makes it special is its mass. It is approximately 17 times more massive than Earth and has a radius that is over two times bigger. Kepler-10c is the first discovered exoplanet of a new potential class of exoplanets called Mega-Earth for massive terrestrial exoplanets that have at least 10 times the mass of Earth. HD 1897-33b HD 1897-33b is another exoplanet 64 light years away from the solar system and it looks very similar to Earth. NASA has confirmed that they detected methane gas, steam, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide on it, which is an important discovery since their formation could hint at the existence of life forms that were involved in the creation of those gases. Lanikea supercluster. When talking about the Virgo supercluster, I mentioned that it is located in an even larger supercluster called Lanikea. The Lanikea supercluster contains well over 100,000 galaxies, Milky Way included, and it also contains the previously mentioned Great Attractor. It got discovered in 2014 and it is believed that it isn't gravitationally bound to any other object, rather it will disperse over time. Barnard 68. Barnard 68 is a dark and cold molecular cloud, or more specific, a dark absorption nebula, in the constellation of Fucus. Its mass is twice as big as the sun's mass, and it is so dark that no stars can be observed through it. It often gets confused for Boody's Void, which is a giant region of space containing basically nothing. TON 618. TON 618 is a bright quasar located between the constellation Canis Venetisi and Coma Berenices, 18.2 billion light years is away from Earth, a quasar being the active core of a galaxy. TON 618 contains the biggest known black hole, having a mass of 66 billion solar masses, which is more massive than the entire Milky Way galaxy. It also is one of the brightest objects in the universe, being 140 trillion times brighter than the Sun. Arakov. Arakov is a trans-Neptunian object located in the Kuiper belt. It consists of two separate objects that are touching each other, which is quite unusual, and it is the farthest object in the solar system that got visited by a spacecraft. Juno minifigures. In the first part I talked about a space probe called Juno and about some of the notable objects that it carried with it, like a portrait and a signed paper of Galileo Galilei. But apart from those it also carried three Lego minifigures, two of which represented Zeus and Juno from Greek Roman mythology and the third represented Galileo himself. HD 100546b. HD 100546b might be the biggest exoplanet discovered to date, being almost as big as the Sun. It is a gas giant and it orbits the star HD 100546, which is located in the constellation Mosca. HD 100546 and its surrounding planets are very interesting for astronomers and scientists because of the existence of the star's protoplanetary disk, which is a disk made out of gas and dust surrounding a newly formed star, and the potential creation of planets in this very disk. BLC 1. In December of 2020, a radio signal was picked up that appeared to come from our nearest star, Proxima Centauri. It immediately became another potential proof for intelligent alien life and the media was going crazy because of it at the time. But after much reconsideration, scientists came to the conclusion that it is more probable that it was just a technical disturbance. SN 2012Z Zombie Star At the end of a star's life, it usually goes supernova and collapses in on itself, leaving behind a black hole. But there's another type of supernova that doesn't end in the creation of a black hole. A Type 1AX supernova leaves behind a remnant star, which is also referred to as a zombie star. These types of supernovas happen in binary star systems, consisting of a white dwarf and a companion star. When the white dwarf consumes the energy of its companion, it can result in a weak supernova that destroys only half of the white dwarf. SN 2012Z is an example of a zombie star. They are called zombie stars because like zombies, they died and came back to life. These types of supernovas are very rare and SN 2012Z is the only confirmed case of a type 1AX supernova. Skull-shaped asteroid. On Halloween of 2015, the asteroid 2015 TB145 passed Earth by 1.27 lunar distances and a second time in November of 2018. And upon further observation, the asteroid looked eerily similar to a human skull. It was first discovered on the 10th October of 2015, although scientists immediately predicted that it will safely pass Earth on the 31st October, the media used its creepy appearance and the fact that it would approach Earth on Halloween as a means to spread fear and create mass panic, naming it 
the Death Comet and implying that it would collide with Earth. Witch Hat Nebula. IC 2118, also called the Witch Hat Nebula, is a reflection nebula, meaning that the dust and gas it consists of might reflect the light of nearby stars. It lies in the constellation Orion, 900 light years from Earth, and it is shaped like a witch head, hence its nickname. It is also believed to be a remnant of a supernova. Hand of God Nebula. PSR B150958 is a giant pulsar, a fast rotating neutron star in the constellation of Circinus. The nickname it has been given is the Hand of God Nebula, and I don't think I have to explain why. The pictures speak for themselves. It is approximately 1700 years old and spans over 150 light years. The spinning neutron star is emitting energy that creates these complex and beautiful structures around it. Nuclear Pasta. Nuclear Pasta is the strongest material in the universe. It exists inside neutron stars and it is created by the competition of several forces that act inside the neutron star. It consists of neutrons and protons and it got its name because of its pasta-like structure. It is approximately 10 billion times stronger than steel but unfortunately it isn't very useful to us since it can't exist outside neutron stars or else the lack of forces holding it together would result in its detonation. PSR J1748 2446 AD. PSR J1748 and so forth is the fastest known spinning pulsar in the universe. It was first discovered in 2004 and it is located in the constellation Sagittarius. Its mass is assumed to be a third of the sun's mass and it has a radius of 16 kilometers. It is spinning terrifyingly fast at 70,000 kilometers per second which is 24% of the speed of light. Fermi bubbles. The Fermi bubbles are two weird spheric structures located above and under the Milky Way that can only be observed by its gamma rays. They were first discovered in 2010 and they are some kind of foggy clouds but it is uncertain what exactly they are. There are a few theories on how they were created. Some think that they originate from the black hole in the center of the Milky Way. Others think that they were a side product of a supernova. Andy Warhol sketch. In 1969 a small ceramic rectangle with sketches from six different artists on it was sent to the moon. American artist Andy Warhol was one of those artists. This small ceramic rectangle is also called the Moon Museum. Sending your art to the moon is a great honor, so the participating artists mostly drew obscure sketches that could be interpreted in different ways. All except Andy Warhol who decided to draw a sketch of a penis. Uh, yeah, it, it's still on there by the way. It's still on the moon. Amelia Earhart's watch. Amelia Earhart was an American aviation pioneer and author. She was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean and she set many other records that are related to aviation. 82 years after the iconic flight, her watch that she wore during the flight was brought onto the ISS in honor of her legacy and out of respect for what she did for the field of aviation. Piece of Wright Brothers plane. In 1903, the Wright Brothers created the first powered plane, the Flyer One. In April of 2021, a solar powered NASA NASA helicopter, the Ingenuity helicopter, hovered over the surface of Mars. This spacecraft is kind of an experimental aircraft. So as a tribute, they attached a piece of the first successful aircraft, the Flyer 1, to the helicopter, which is also supposed to be a statement for how far humanity has come over the past centuries. Pizza. This one is kinda silly. In 2001, Pizza Hut sent pizzas on the International Space Station, which was of course part of an advertising campaign. Apart from the cheese and tomato sauce, the pizzas had salami as a topping. The pizzas were transported with the Russian Progress Transporter, which is a space transporter for supplies. GNZ 11. GNZ 11 is not only the oldest known galaxy, but also the most distant one. It is located in the constellation Ursa Major, 34 billion light years away from us. It was created 400 million years ago and it only has 1% of the amount of stars in the Milky Way and only 4% of its size. Stevenson 218. Finally, Stevenson 218 is the biggest known star in the universe. It is a red supergiant in the constellation Scutum. It is 20,000 light years away from Earth and it is one of the most luminous red supergiants. Its radius is 2150 times bigger than the sun's and its volume is 10 billion times that of the sun. UY's cutie was already terrifying but I can't even begin to describe this. If Stevenson 218 would replace sun it would reach the orbit of Saturn. Tabby star. Tabby star is a star in the constellation Cygnus 1470 light years from earth. This one stood out to a couple of scientists because of its unusual light fluctuation including its dimming of brightness by 20 
92%. And best thing is, nobody knows why. Of course, there are tons of theories and they are very entertaining. One of them has something to do with the fact that there's potentially an uneven ring of dust orbiting the star, but nobody's certain. And yes, a star having a giant ring of dust orbiting it is also very unusual. Another theory states that heavy star consumed a planet, which would explain the sudden shift in brightness, but the theory that takes the cake is this one. Tabby star's unusual light fluctuation might be the result of a Dyson Swarm, a mega structure created by an advanced alien civilization that envelopes the star to consume its energy. And although it's not that likely that that's actually the case, it will remain a plausible theory until proven otherwise. Boody's Void. Boody's Void is a giant spherical region in space having a diameter of 330 million light years that, apart from very few galaxies, is completely empty. It got discovered in 1981 and to this day only 60 galaxies have been discovered. Scientists have no idea why and how there's just nothing at all in this area. Some believe that it has been formed by smaller voids merging into one, but it's uncertain. IPTF 14 HLS IPTF 14 HLS is an unusual supernova star that goes against everything that we know about the cosmos. Starting in September of 2014, the star went supernova and continuously erupted for a thousand days, taking 10 times Times longer than a normal supernova. And it doesn't stop here. IPTF 14 HLS already went supernova in 1954, which means that it must have survived and turned into a zombie star. But how is it possible that it went supernova again just a few decades later? And why did the supernova last so long? Coma Wall. The Coma Wall is an enormous galaxy filament. Galaxy filaments are walls of gravitationally bound galaxy superclusters, which are known for being the largest structures in the universe. The Coma Wall is one of the biggest superstructures in the observable universe. It is between 500 and 750 million light years in length, 20 million light years in width and 16 million in thickness. Galaxy walls of that size are so rare that only six of them have been discovered to date. Local Void. The Local Void is a huge empty region in space located right next to the local group which spans at least over 150 million light years. It is also believed that the Local Void is constantly expanding and growing. CMB Cold Spot. There's a region in the cosmic microwave background that is unusually cold for no apparent reason. Some scientists believe that it is caused by a huge void between us and a primordial cosmic microwave background. If such a void would exist, it would be the largest object in the universe. Therefore, it isn't that likely to be true. But there's another theory that states that the cold spot is caused by the existence of a parallel universe that imprints beyond the edge of our own. If this turned out to be true, this would be the first evidence for parallel universes. J0313-1806. J0313-1806 is the most distant known quasar 13 billion light years away from us and it contains the oldest black hole in the universe being 670 million years old. And this poses a huge problem for our current understanding of the creation of the universe. The universe is 14 billion years old and the average life duration of a star is 10 billion years. A black hole of that size and mass couldn't possibly have grown that big in just a few hundred million years. Icarus. Icarus is a blue supergiant star that is the most distant known star in the universe. It is 14 billion light years away from Earth and it got named after Icarus, a famous character from Greek mythology. Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. Finally, the largest known structure in the observable universe. It is 10 billion light years in length and for reference, the entire observable universe is about 93 billion light years in diameter, which means it covers over 10% of the observable universe. As you might have already predicted, this is an enormous galaxy filament consisting of an un countable amount of galaxies. It is located near the constellations Hercules and Corona Borealis hence the name. Cosmic string. Cosmic strings are hypothetical one-dimensional topographical defects which probably have formed during the early stages of the universe, which basically means they are cracks in space-time. Those cracks could be infinitely long and moving very fast. Those cracks would be so tiny that even if a human could perceive them, they would appear as one-dimensional. Although they might be very thin, they would still be extremely massive with a few centimeters weighing a hundred quadrillion tons. Sadly, the cosmic strings aren't detectable from Earth anymore due to the expansion of the universe. If they exist, there would be a tremendous help to find out how the universe got created. Finally, we reached the final entry. And for that, I brought on a friend of mine who I would consider a space expert. So Quabble, take it away. When you think of astronomical objects, what do you think of? The moon, the sun, perhaps galaxies and black holes. But what about corned beef sandwich.
No, I'm, I'm not joking. Let me set the stage. The year is 1965 and it's time to go to space yet again with the Gemini 3. The launch goes well and everything, but hold on, what's this? Astronaut John Young has taken a sandwich with him. A corned beef sandwich to be exact. Now why is bringing a sandwich a problem, I hear you ask? And it's actually because of a little something called a crumb. On Earth, when you eat a sandwich, all the crumbs just fall to the ground due to another little strange phenomenon called gravity. When you're in orbit, however, you don't really feel this so-called gravity because you're actually falling, but like, continually. So this seemingly harmless crumb that we call it here on Earth can actually turn into a dangerous storm of particles that go everywhere. And I'm sure you can see where this is going. The corned beef sandwich was functionally like a grenade of corned beef sandwich crumbs going everywhere in the capsule. Kind of. Nothing really happened. Young took a few bites and restored the sandwich. The capsule landed and the crew was reprimanded for their actions, although Young, who took the sandwich with him, still had a successful astronaut career as the command module pilot for the Apollo 10 mission and the commander for the Apollo 16 mission. The sandwich he took with him still exists, by the way. It's preserved in resin. That's it. That was the whole thing. Thank you all for watching. This will be my last iceberg video. That means if you subscribed just for the iceberg videos, you can unsubscribe now because I won't make any new ones. Iceberg videos are a fun genre and I still enjoy watching them, but I want to concentrate on different types of content from now on. But if you want to watch more space related iceberg videos, then I highly suggest that you go over to Quabble's channel, who was kind enough to help me with this iceberg. His videos are super informative, funny and highly edited. And if you like this video, I will assure you that you will love his videos. So go over there and check him out. I have several social media accounts and a Discord server that you can check out if you like. A big thank you to my patrons, especially my top tier patrons, Kiza, Kayla and Trill Music. Some of them actually aren't patrons anymore, but I thought I'd mention them anyway, because I haven't released a video in a very long time. Um, however, they paid for all these months of inactivity, so um, it's only fair to them. And you can't even imagine how much your support helps me. And that's it. Until next time. Goodbye.